Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Larry Kilroy. I'm with the Healthy Building Network, and I am the project lead for the Pharos Project. And I am here to talk to you a little bit about what makes a building material product green. A lot of people look for a simple answer. How do we know if a product is green? Well, the simple answer is there is no simple answer. And there's for many reasons. The first reason is that a, looking at single attribute certifications only tells you part of the story. There's only one part of the story that is translated when you look at a single, a single attribute certification. Second, the requirements of specific projects can require different traits needed in a building product. For one project, a regional material might make something greener than a project that needs something very specific for an energy purpose or for a renewable material credit type situation. The third issue is that green can vary from product category to product category. So in other words, uh, what makes a green roofing might not make a green carpet. And finally, what makes it difficult is that greenwashing is pretty prevalent in all industries, including ours. Uh, you really need to dig around in order to understand what the certifications are telling you uh, and look for third-party documentation to see if those certifications hold true. So really what we find is you're asking yourself a question, uh, not what makes a product green, but how do I make the best decisions to make my project green? And really it all begins with one thing. That one thing is manufacturer transparency. It's very important for you to base your decisions on knowing what is in a product. And the only way to know what's in a product is for the manufacturer of that product to tell you. There's a number of ways out there that are developing in the marketplace to do this. Uh, as far as hazards that may be in the content, uh, there is uh, the health product declaration movement underway. This is where you can declare uh, the chemicals and the hazards associated with those chemicals that are in your product. Life cycle data reporting. Uh, there's uh, anywhere from a life cycle assessment to an environmental uh, product declaration. These are be gaining popularity in ways for manufacturers to translate what they're doing to make their products greener. And then corporate responsibility reporting. And this is becoming also very important when choosing a product uh, and seeing what makes a product green in your situation. There are really three keys when looking at what makes a product green. The first, environmental sustainability. Many people are familiar with this concept. Uh, there's renewable energy use, uh, things like water use, uh, of course resource use, using materials that are uh, closed loop and therefore you can continue to use in other forms. Uh, newer areas at looking at green products that are coming along, no negative health impacts. This is one that's growing important in the marketplace. Uh, in particular, uh, you all are familiar probably with uh, volatile organic stand, uh, compound standards, uh, VOC standards. That is really based around the building occupant. There's also toxicity issues. Uh, with not just off-gassing, but the materials as they break down and decompose to the occupants. Uh, there's also issues around the construction and demolition folks and what they encounter when installing and dismantling a building. So those are important. And then finally, looking at issues around social responsibility and where these products are manufactured are more and more becoming an important place for us to look and to see where uh, our products are coming from when we make decisions about whether a product is green or not. Environmental sustainability. Many people are familiar with this. Uh, it can mean many different things to many different people. Uh, the most familiar is probably recycled, reusable. Uh, energy use is obviously one that's out there in the marketplace with lead and such. Uh, also embodied energy, what the product actually uses over the lifetime of the product has become important. Uh, new areas where we're starting to research for environmental sustainability 
also have to do with water use. Water use in the manufacturer, water use over the life of the product and things such as maintenance. This is becoming more and more important. This is really the idea of no negative health impacts. Uh, this is important not only, as I said, for the building occupant, but for the creation and demolition of a building. Now, uh, it ranges everywhere from what's in your carpets and your paints, but it also has implications about things like furniture and maintenance, uh, what chemicals are used to clean the various products that you choose. Uh, many of these you're familiar with, halogenated flame retardants. There's been a lot in the news about this lately. Uh, we're finding increased levels of halogenated flame retardants in mother's milk, for instance. It's a bioaccumulant. Uh, we are, uh, with SVOCs and VOCs, many of you already work with these um, in your everyday work. Uh, things like phthalates, BPAs, these are things that cause chronic asthma and things, as, and things that are respiratory issues. And then, of course, heavy metals, um, which a lot of them are marked for not using anymore in materials. This is very important because this is the legacy of the buildings. This is the part that doesn't go away. These things wind up bioaccumulating. And then finally, socially just and responsible products. And more and more, it's becoming important to understand where your products come from. Uh, who, what are the communities where these products are made? How are they impacted by the corporations making these products? And that's something that is becoming uh, very important to consider when you say, is this a green product? So now that we've established there's no easy answer, uh, the question is really, how do I make the best decision for my product about what the proper green product would be? So it's important to understand three different things when you're doing this. First is the problem in the current marketplace. What are the issues that I should be avoiding with what's out there in the market right now? The second thing to understand is what we call the ideal. The ideal is what would a perfect product look like. In many cases, this is not available. Uh, and that's a very important fact because uh, a lot of cases you're going to be working with uh, what we call the goal. And what the goal is is really what can be accomplished in the current marketplace in the next two to three years, a lot of times in the lifetime of your project from inception to actual creation of the building. This is where we see most of market transformation happening, uh, is in this two to three year window. Uh, we believe an incremental change is extremely important. Uh, it's almost impossible to get to an ideal product anytime soon in most product categories and therefore uh, really celebrating, <coughs> excuse me, the incremental change uh, is really very important for our industry. In summary, we believe that Everybody using the best data available uh, is going to lead to you making the best decisions for your product and really creating a green, a green building. But most importantly, helping to bridge this gap of not knowing where to find a green product and understanding that it's really about finding what the best product in your situation is going to be. And looking at it as a whole, uh, you're going to find that what you end up with is a much greener building. We also believe that the only way to make it easier to find the simple answer of what's green is continue to move the marketplace so most products are green. And that takes some of the guesswork out. The only way this can continue to happen, we believe, is with continued dialogue between manufacturers, the building owners, and the practitioners, the professionals who are designing and building the buildings. Uh, this will allow us uh, to continue to move the market to where it's easy to be green. So I would encourage everyone to consider uh, having those dialogues when you're looking at purchasing particular products with the manufacturers. Uh, continuing this dialogue, I would uh, ask manufacturers to consider continuing down the path to full transparency. Uh, there are a lot of vehicles out there that allow you to continue this dialogue, to sit at this table and have the conversation about what makes a product green. And with the momentum, we should keep this going. The marketplace is in a much better place than it was a couple of years ago. And we continue to get better. And we hope that in 10 years, uh, it will be very easy to find green products in the market. So with that, I'll conclude. And if there's any questions.